In this video we're going to look at the fine movements the motion rig makes when taxiing and the larger movements on takeoff and landing, plus what the response looks like over grass. We'll also briefly look at frame rates, and remember this is X-Plane 11.4 and the Pimax 5K+, and this is in preparation for upgrading to Vulcan. Towards the end we will observe the issue of tracking errors in VR and finally I'll share my thoughts on the differences between the SFX 100 4 degrees of freedom platform and the Stuart 6 degrees of freedom platform. Here are my X-Plane settings. For this video I'm at Melbourne International YMML uh, default airport. I'm recording with OBS which produces quite severe artifacts in Pimax which are not seen in the recording. I found it was better to get X-Plane started then pause it before starting SIM feedback to control the motion platform. I haven't done any other tweaking in the configuration I got from GitHub. What you're seeing in this video is what comes out of the box. When doing a brake check the simulator is way too violent in my opinion. I need to investigate that as I know that others have complained about this over the years. When taxiing you can both hear and feel the apron joins, although it is quite subtle. It is more noticeable on the runway. The combination of both the visual and audio in VR means you don't need large movements from the rig for it to feel convincing. And as a test, I bumped up the intensity slider in sim feedback from 50% to 80%. And as you can imagine, brake checking is not recommended. So back to 50% for now. Frame rate is in the low to mid 50s. Uh, this is with steam super sampling set at 1. I'm going to take off from runway 34, loop around and land on runway 16. After landing, I'll run on the grass for a little bit so you can see what the rig does. Wind is zero, clear skies. I'm using two lighthouses from my previous HTC Vive headset, but even so, the head position is still lost. I'll investigate that over the next few days. I have a second HTC Vive controller which I can attach to the rig as part of that solution, I would imagine. How does it compare with my previous 6 degrees of freedom Stuart platform? Well the main difference is that it is much smaller and importantly it's much easier to get into and out of. I needed a small step ladder for the Stuart platform. Actuator speed is about the same but the tra travel uh, is less than half and this is the point of compromise. On the plus side the SFX100 rig is quicker and easier to build and doesn't need special tools or skills like welding. The costs are about the same, but it's easier to mount joysticks and pedals on the SFX100 platform and more importantly it's quicker to swap things for different simulations. Finally, I found that the longer lead screws on the Stuart platform actuators were not perfectly straight and any small variance produced shuddering of the ball screw when it had to move quickly from one end to the other. 
this is not an issue with the SFX rig. So overall, I'm very happy with this motion platform. Well, I hope that was useful. Bye for now.